Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today on Oceanborn, a new map for the channel. It's gonna be Sue and Classic from the recent GSL Group D. Bottom right, it's gonna be Classic. Top left, gonna be Sue. Both these players are not at the top of their respective races for StarCraft 2, which means I think it's gonna be a good match. A nice PvZ, fairly evenly matched here on the new patch. So let's see who's going to come out on top here today on Oceanborn. Mm hmm, mm hmm, hmm. Hmm. So no. Yeah, no rich mineral fields. Any purple geysers around? Rich Vespine geysers? Nope. Nope, 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 nope. And yeah, blocking the hatch. We got Sue to take as a first expansion at the third base location. That has not changed in the recent patch. But that's okay. Zerg players are used to it. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a one get expand timing here. Second pylon. Second gas. Expansion. Cyber core. In the future here for Classic. Playing the mineral game. Mr. Probe. Hasn't lost yet. Classic is using every inch of this 285 APM that he has to play harassment games here with this probe. <laughs> Sue is playing it too. Ah, very good. So, expansion on the way. Second gas, second pylon. And Cybercore coming up already. Anyway, hope you're having a great time. Hope you're enjoying the StarCraft 2 here on the Falcon Paladin channel. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, we are growing in numbers. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate everyone who's done that for recently. What's the play, Sue? What's it going to be? I'm going to get a third. I got to get a third base. There's nothing about this that tells me he's going to... Yeah, he's pulled workers off gas. Yeah, nothing tells me this is going to be any kind of a two-base anything. Baneling was Stroach Ravager style thing. Uh-uh. No gas being taken, no gas being harvested. This is a third base, yeah, but about 230. Probe's like, hey, you gonna do a third base or what? Might have to wait for these lings to pop out to chase this probe away, but it's gonna come. Possibly. We do have a Stargate opening here from Classic. These lings are gonna get a beautiful scout off. Wow, just a wide open front door, huh? A little bit odd, gotta say. These lings just gonna die. Don't just there you go. Don't just die. Yeah. Oh, this is a lot of probes off the line though. What the heck, man? Put them back to work. Oracle on the way from Classic, and a stalker's gonna show up. And these are already wounded lings, so they're going to die. Bam. Nicely done. Bruno's like third base. Classic's like, where's your third base, man? This is weird. What are we doing? Ling flooding. He's barely harvesting gas at 3.30. His speed is done. And he's finally taking a third. Okay, this is very strange stuff out of Sue. What is the plan here? Did you forget? Did you forget you needed a third base? I'm very confused by this. Mm. All right, well, Oracle cruising out. Oracle name as submitted by a WGen8, Barbie. After her latest adventure on Earth, Barbie finds herself stepping into another reality. Will she find her way home, or will she be caught in another chase in space? Good question, Barbie. What do we got here? Oh, no spores at four minutes either, so drones are going to die. All right, man. Sue, you seem a little sloppy, sir. What are we doing here? Yeah, Classic's third base is coming up at the same time that Sue's third base is coming up. You can't be on even footing here economically against a Protoss and hope to beat them, Sue. That's like Zerg 101. An evolution chamber coming in. Still no Roach Warren. Still no Baneling Nest. Still no Lair. It's just, we're just going to try to win this game with like plus one Lings or something. Who are you? Falcon Paladin? That's how he plays, Zer. He's just like, Lings are fun. We get upgrades for Lings. Win. And then there's like Disruptors and Storm and Resonating Labor Depths. And I'm like, ah, why can't I just win with my tier one units against all of this tier three stuff? It's not fair. 
Ooh, good surround. That adept's gonna die. This one, too, probably. Yep. And now the Ling's getting a couple hits off on that pylon. Gonna bust it out of there. Barbie the Oracle. Is like, am I needed? No, great. Let's head on back in. Yeah, you really want two spores against two oracles. Two spores and a queen, or two queens and a spore. One of the two here. Lings keep darting back in. I got, like I said, a lot of lings. So queens and lings against this. Not an all in, right? It's a three base play here. But these early adepts taking some hits and possibly even dying. Oh, look at these. Nice warp in, screwing with the pathing on those lings. Okay, uh, no, the trades are not good here. 34 lings have died. Six adepts have died, though. That's a bigger number than I thought had gone down. Still no spores at the natural base, although there is one coming up, which is nice. Plus one melee attack on the way. But it's not going to be done in time for this resonating glaive attack, which, again, is not a two-base all-in. This is a three-basing classic. Sue knows it's a three-basing classic. He's not expecting crazy amounts of stuff here. Is there even a warp prism? No. It's not, not even close to a war prism. So this is just Resonating Glaive Adept Attack. It's not an all-in. You can't reinforce quickly because you don't have the war prism. Sue taking a fourth base here. I mean, I will support it as a human and as a Zerg player, but here come Los Adepts. And behold, they're going to finish that shade right here, man. Queen transfuses. Queen's trying to stay alive. Transfuses an extra Queen DPS here. One Adept goes down. Ling's trying to run on in and get a surround on these dudes. More drones getting massacred. And these Adepts, yeah, some of them are going to die in here. This is a tomb for some of these guys. Uh, that plus one melee attack is done for Sue, actually. So you know what? They're doing better against these Adepts than they usually do against a Resident Glaive style attack. Oh, look, a Stasis. It catches some of these drones. Two Stasises. There's one here and then one over here, but wearing off quickly. Ten drones die. We got more adepts. We got adepts shading. We got adepts running. We got adepts killing stuff. I think overall, it's totally fine. Yeah, these adepts are all dead. I think Sue's okay. Another stasis catches four drones here. These oracles are swinging around. Yeah, all of these adepts are dead. So that's 26 adepts for 13 drones and, I don't know, something like 30 lings. A couple queens died, too. Dude, we're just coming back in with stasises. <laughs> what is this oracle doing? They are just throwing down stasises in all of this chaos. Not many kills between them, but... Mm -hmm. Stopping mining is nice. Storm on the way from Classic. An infestation pit rolling up from Sue's fourth base is done. He can rebuild the drones fairly quickly. He lost 13, but he's back up to 69 workers again. Yeah, I think Sue's okay. I think Classic going for that without being able to reinforce quickly. You try to definitely use the oracles as a bit of a uh, a bit of a help there, you know. That was nice. He definitely caught more drones in stasis than you normally do at this level of StarCraft. Just because Sue was so gosh darn distracted. But anyway. Anyway. Three base in it from Classic. And he's kind of going for a fourth base. Another round of adepts is made and sent out across the map. It's like, look, if you're not going to make banelings, if you're not going to make roaches, I'll just keep showing up with adepts and getting halfway decent trades, I guess. Looks like Hydras. Hydras are out. Working on that speed upgrade. Ooh, Centrifugal Hooks is on the way. So maybe, maybe some Banelings in the future here. Although no, none are currently present. It is just a potential future of Banelings that exists. There we go. Firing up some Banes. But the Adepts are, you know, they're poking, they're prodding. They did, decided not to come in. They saw the Hydras and said, ooh, Hydro Ling is really good against Adept. The Ling's taking the damage. The Hydras dealing a ton of damage. Especially if those Ling's have plus one attack. They're dealing more damage than you would expect them to. Difficult hooks no longer gives Zergs. Uh, no longer gives Banelings that extra HP. You're gonna you no, know, that's a terrible place to finish that shade. There we go, smart. Mm, Classics fourth base is coming up. Lings rolling in, trying to get a few cancels on things with their plus one attack, plus two attack, about 50% complete of hives on the way. Hydroling Bane here from Sue. Very interesting. We've seen this be very popular in ZVT recently. Not as much in ZVP. Storm is good. Disruptors are good against it. Colossus are so good against this. Immortals bad. Immortals are bad against this. I don't really. Why would you fire up two Immortals here? Adrenal getting started as soon as that hive completes. Vipers being added into the mix here too with that hive tech. 
creep spreading as well as he can here is Suva and Classic's fourth base is rolling. So income favoring Classic. Oh, Baneling, but the Archons though. Uh, Banelings get or probes get pulled. Oof. That was a pretty fail Bane attack. However, Zerglings trying to take down a cannon. Hydroling Bane here. That wall is hard. And Sue's got to retreat. How on earth did Lings get all the way into the main? I don't know, but Oracles are cruising those out of there too. What the? They must have swung through before these guys blocked the opening because I don't think they dropped. I don't think there are any dropper lords at all. So mm. resources lost, 5,200 for Sue, 3,900 for Classic. These adepts are just not getting anything done. Okay. I mean, sure. Is there a base up here? Yes. Great. Scouted. Another base is done from Sue. Spire on the way. Adrenal almost done. Plus three melee attack coming in. It's Archons. It's Archons. It's High Templar. It's Zealots. It's Immortals. I, this is not good against Hydroling Bane. It's really not. Unless the Banelings are crashing in on the Immortals and the Archons, in which case they're useless. But if you can get them to crash onto the Zealots, then the Hydras will clean pretty much everything else out perfectly. Storms, as always, are the great equalizer in StarCraft and have been since 1998, when Psionic Storm was released into the world in StarCraft 1. Still pretty good. Not as good as it is in StarCraft 1 and Brood War, Psionic Storm, but good against especially comps like this, where everything is fast and everything is squishy as a result. So charge is done. Stasis is coming in. Storm, storm, just backing out. Spend your storms here, Classic, says Sue. Guess who's got more, though? Right. Banelings. Oh, they do connect on a couple of these High Templar. And like I said, Hydra's pretty scary if that Templar count isn't super high. Army value 79 to 62. Classic has a lead here, looking pretty scary. And yeah, this hatch is dead. I don't think Sue has enough to save it. I'm going to mess around this backside here a little bit. Try to dodge more storms, because there's always more storms. And, yeah, all the drones of this base die, but that's not as concerning as this army continuing to get on up here. Blinding Cloud was dodged and then backed up into. But yeah, Immortal down, Immortal down. These are plus two Adrenalings, man. They're going to trade pretty well here. Queen's added into the DPS as well. And that's a hold. Sue manages to hold it. He's still got 72 workers. This Immortal's got 15 kills and gets saved, maybe. Uh, just kidding, it gets abandoned in favor of a two High Templar on an Archon instead. See ya. Like I said, Immortal's not great against this composition that Sue's going with today. Oh, sure. Let's just fire up some uh, some Carriers Classic off of four bases. Why not? Let's do it. Greater Spire is on the way here from Sue. He could fire up some Corruptors right now if he wants. He's trying to get Broodlords, which are faster now in this current patch. And would be pretty good against this comp. I mean, obviously, Broodlords are not very good against carriers by the nature of where they can attack. But Spire means Corruptors are never too far away. They don't take too long to build. And overall, I don't know. Sue expanding up this way. He did save this base. I said it was dead. It is alive. Somehow, magically, this War Prism is done. This War Prism is going to get abducted into something. Oh, Parasitic Bomb on a War Prism. Uh, okay. Is it enough to kill it? No. 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 Oh, six HP left. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think Sue miscalculated. I think he just counted wrong there. Uh, I feel like you could have killed this base. There are no High Templar here at all. I don't know what they pulled back for unless... Just caught wind of this army kind of pulling back at the same time, right? This is a very interesting game. New patch, new strats, man. So Broodlords are on the way and some Corruptors. Charge lots into the fourth base. So annoying to deal with. Very fast at killing drones. Great at killing queens, too. That's why you want a couple spines at your bases, man. Queen, ah, summarily executed. But now Adrenal Wings are here and way outnumbering. More than that 4 to 1 ratio against those zealots, so they are dead. Corruptors added a mothership on the way because, hey, motherships are way more maneuverable and faster now, too. So, all right, I might see a Brewlord versus a mothership set up in this game. Very cool stuff. And this War Prism that didn't die because the Parasitic Bomb did not kill it. Oh, 
Uh, how did one zealot get out of that? And the other ones didn't warp in. Maybe he got unloaded, and the other ones were warping in, and so they all died when the warp prism died, but he's alive because of that. Okay, you're gonna let a queen kill you? Really? Okay, kind of a waste there. Classic, but alright. Everything's fine. Zealot's heading up the top side. Sue's got most of his army situated again. He keeps poking down here and then being like, nah. But the brood lords are here. Behold, their extra bit of speed. Zealots, there we saw. We saw him run up that way. That hatch is in a lot of trouble. Okay, look at them dodging storm a little bit. Where's the mothership? Where is the mothership? There's a bit of time where this base is safe. Storming your own Archon a little bit there. Golly, Banelings crashing on Archon's never good. Broodlord's trying to win the ground battle. Hydras are just hoping there are enough Hydralisks. Wow, to actually deal with these Interceptors. Corruptors take down the mothership pretty much immediately after <laughs> she shows up. Uh, not enough Corruptors to deal with these carriers, and surprisingly, there's still a ground army here. What on earth? How on earth is there still a ground army here? Those Broodlords should have been crushing them. Uh, zealots have taken down one base, and now they're going after another one. They're not going to be able to kill this. Ling DPS is honestly insane. A little Hydra help there, too. Wipes it out. Oh! Zealots coming in to finish off this fifth base that had been previously injured by a previous attack. So, ugh, two bases down for Sue. Bunch of drones have died. 34 drones have died. 15 probes have gone down. Classic didn't even lose this Nexus. Managed to rebuff the attack by Sue and almost killed three hatches, but only managed to kill two. Oof. Brutal stuff here. 69 workers from Sue. I'm going to try to rebuild one of those hatches at least. By that, I mean this one. Zealots really want this base. At 97 supply. Cracklings! Yeah, your shield batteries and cannons not great. Let's recall an entire carrier army to deal with like 30 Zerglings that showed up to threaten your base. Woof! Scary stuff, but that's why you have the cannons and the shield batteries. Even if they die, you know what? It's better than the Nexus dying. And those Lings would have killed that Nexus if there hadn't been the other stuff there. That's why you static defense your bases as Protoss. That's the reason, man. Further plus three upgrades on the way from Classic. Love to see a plus three shield upgrade. Holy cow. You're at 17 minutes. Upgrades are cheaper in the current patch. So that's sort of a big deal. Zealots are very happy to see there's not a base up here. Very happy to see there's not a base up there. Like, impressively happy. Creep spread has been pretty aggressive from Sue, but also... I think all of the, well, I guess there's just a new one. So a bunch of the creep tumors have been killed. New ones have to be planted if they want to spread any further. Yeah, Zerglings show up. Protoss army in the general vicinity. Got some High Templar helping to defend this right side base in case Lings show up again. It's not just cannons that try to do it. Void rays and flux veins in the production tab for classic to help deal with the corruptors. And plus two flyer attack on the way from Sue here too. So, what are we looking at here? These zealots are going to get this hat. They're going to get it. No, transfuse saves the hatch. I was going to say, were there any transfuses? Uh-oh, Classic's got his entire army on this side. Corruptors, don't fight the void rays. Okay, hatch down. You really want to fight the carriers if you can, guys. You're just trying to not die and just absolutely murdering broodlords here. With the Void Rays, with the Carriers. Okay, Corruptors decide to kind of engage, but they're eating storms. The Void Ray Prismatic Alignment is on. Sue on the other side. Yeah, tries to link counter attack. Nope! That's not happening, and... <laughs> GG! Classic wins it on the back of a very traditional hybrid Carrier ground-style army. Carrier, Mothership, Void Ray, High Templar Archons, baby. Maybe there's some immortals down here too. I have, yep, there's a couple immortals down there too, just for good measure. And yeah, it's so tough to deal with. It's just tough. You need some abducts, you need great angles. 
It's just a very, very, very strong comp. And if you've just lost a couple of your bases and your income is not as good, it's largely favoring Classic over the last 10 minutes. You're going to have a really hard time having enough stuff and the right stuff and the right upgrades to actually handle that. So well played by Classic. I mean, just dead impressive. <sighs> impressive stuff. Man. Amazing. Absolutely amazing, amazing stuff there from Classic. Getting that win. Crushing the Zerg. Protoss has some hope after a game like this. Resources lost 39,000 and 28,000 here. One carrier died. One. That's all. One carrier died. Eight of them on the field. Pretty strong. And yeah, Immortals, in case any Ultras show up, that wasn't really a problem. Archons for everything on the ground. And pretty good against the Corruptors too. And just the math works. Don't know how else to explain it to you. The math is the math. So nicely done, classic. Good harassment throughout the game. Building up, getting strong, saving his own bases, killing hatcheries. And then getting to his late game comp and crushing. Crushing. Man. That was awesome. That was very good stuff. So nice job, Classic. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw, what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.